It's always difficult to hear bad news, and the worst kind anyone can bring is news of death. That's what Captain Ted Curtis, Department of Army Notification Officer, is doing here. His job isn't any easier because he has done this before, or because he doesn't know the people. In fact, not knowing them actually makes his job more of a strain, because he doesn't know what to expect. Uh, Mrs. Foley? Uh, I'm Mrs. Stepnack. You want my daughter? Is she at home? Yes. Uh, Carol! It's for you! May I come in? What's the matter? Is her husband in some kind of trouble? Mrs. Foley, I'm Captain Curtis. Oh, he said he wanted to talk to you. Oh. Could we sit down? Mrs. Foley, uh, I have something to tell you about your husband. The Secretary of the Army has requested us to inform you of the death of your husband, who was killed during maneuvers at his duty station on Wednesday. The Secretary extends his deepest sympathy to you and your family in your tragic loss. I'm sorry. No. 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 The notification officer will refer to a follow-up visit from another, the survivor assistance officer. In this case, Lieutenant Mears, from a nearby post. Help you to start the arrangements for the funeral. I'll call the mortuary officer and the headquarters commandant and see that arrangements begin just as soon as possible. Meanwhile, if there's anything else I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to call upon me. You can reach me at any time. I'll leave this pamphlet with you, which I think you'll find to be very helpful. Some of it won't be too clear. There have been some changes made, but I'll go over it with you when you have some time. Now you have my phone number and I'll be in contact with you. And remember, I want to emphasize what I told you yesterday, that I'm here to assist you. So if there's any questions you have or anything I can do at all, just don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. The commandant in turn calls the post chaplain, who will be responsible for the religious services. Yes, George. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Sure, we can handle it. I'll try to take care of it myself. What can you tell me about Sergeant Paul Foley? As soon as he has all the basic information he needs, the chaplain will usually make arrangements to see the family. And he'll also try to talk to the funeral director. I knew it was a military funeral, but uh, that's about all. I'm not surprised. I'm sure the family doesn't know much more than that. Oh, you haven't talked to them yet? No, I'm just on my way over to see them now. They live quite a way out. Yes, I know. That's why I stopped by here first. I was hoping you might be able to tell me a little information about them. Well, I don't think I can help you out very much. I know that... It's Sergeant not always Paul possible to discuss practical matters or question members of the family the during their time of grief. And the, and the chaplain is simply Sergeant trying to get as much basic information as he can before he sees them. You didn't know Sergeant Foley. No. Why don't you talk to the escort? He's still around. Well, I think I will. Do you happen to know his name? I have it here somewhere. Yeah, right here. Sergeant Chavez. Morning, Chaplain. I'm Sergeant Chavez, Sergeant Foley's escort. Thank you for coming over, Sergeant. Nice to be here, sir. Paul and I were very good friends. Fine. I was hoping you'd be able to tell me something about him. Okay. What do you want to know? Everything. All I have is the kind of information you get out of a service record. It's all very cut and dried. 24 years old, finished high school, worked as a mechanic's helper for several years. Paul was a wheel vehicle mechanic in our outfit. And a pretty good one, too. Yes, I know. But... What kind of a person was he? He was a nice guy. Everybody seemed to like him. Easy going? 
Yeah. Pretty loose, too. I mean, nothing seemed to bother him too much. What about this accident? The one in which he was killed? That was a fluke. I mean, he and two other guys were horsing around in a jeep. And it turned over. The other two guys were thrown clear. But, uh... Paul wasn't that lucky. Did you know his wife? Oh, uh, no. No. He used to show me pictures of her. And he was always talking about her. The chaplain has obviously taken a personal interest in Paul Foley. But there's also a very practical reason for his interest. In the first place, it's hard to have any real understanding or feeling for someone he doesn't know. And secondly, the more he knows about Sergeant Foley and his family, the less chance there is of making embarrassing and painful blunders. The better he knows the family, the more effective is his ministry to them. My parents were very unhappy when they heard that Paul wouldn't be buried from the church. But I understood Paul didn't go to church. He hasn't for quite a few years, but my parents still consider him a Catholic. Have they discussed this with Carol? Well, no, they were annoyed because they weren't consulted. I can understand that, but I'm sure there was no intention of ignoring them. As a matter of fact, I don't think Carol would object to a church ceremony. Particularly if she knew how important it was to your parents. Why don't you ask her right now? I suppose I should have mentioned something before. I just wasn't thinking about it. By his understanding and help, the chaplain has resolved a situation that could have led to bitterness and pain. The chaplain can help also with the family's decisions on funeral arrangements. Grief and shock can make it difficult for the family to plan the funeral. The chaplain is performing a valuable service if he can help them avoid emotional and impulsive decisions. Yes, yes, yes. Now, if you just come to my office. He can help in other ways, too. Why did this thing happen to us? That's a hard question, Carol. Who knows why these things have to happen? But I am sure there is a reason. All we can do is trust in God. I know. I know. But it seems so unfair. We spend so little time with each other. I just spoke with him last week. Oh, Chaplain, please. The chaplain's ministry to the bereaved is very important. It calls for his own faith experience, and spiritual values to help others work out an understanding and acceptance of their loss. In planning the service itself, the chaplain is guided by the wishes of the family. If a church ceremony is planned, he coordinates it with a civilian clergyman. If you would preach the homily, you would be very closely involved in the mass then, and, um, you know, due military honors could be paid to him. Right. The mass, right. right? Okay, fine. Fine, so. Perhaps the family may prefer a non-religious ceremony. The chaplain is responsible for seeing that they have it. Okay. These things have I spoken. And in all religious ceremonies, the services are always those of the particular faith responsible for the burial. Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. El Mole Rachamim, Shochen Bamromim. The civilian clergyman may be asked to lead prayers at the visitation prior to the church services. The throne said to me, See, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Together, the civilian clergyman and the chaplain can assure the family that both the religious and the military ceremonies are properly carried out. The military ceremony begins with the traditional formation outside the church or chapel. The chaplain is stationed outside the church door when the hearse arrives. If there are honorary pallbearers, they form two ranks on either side of the entrance.
If he were in uniform, the chaplain would stand at attention and salute as the flag-draped casket is removed from the hearse. Inside the church, the casket is placed on a carrier, and the chaplain continues to lead the procession to the sanctuary. Sergeant Paul Foley has come home. It's certainly not the kind of homecoming anyone could have wanted or anticipated. It's a homecoming of sadness and mortality. But there's another home and another homecoming for Paul now. Our Lord says that in his father's home, there are many rooms. And he gave it the seal of his own authority by saying, if it were not so, I would have told you. My friends, think what assurance there is in those words. At the conclusion of ceremonies in the church, the chaplain leads the casket as it is taken out. Paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you, where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you have eternal rest. I am the resurrection and the life. The man who believes in me will live, even if he dies. And every living person who puts his faith in me if he were in uniform, the chaplain would salute as the casket with flag is carried past him. At this point, if he's wearing vestments, the chaplain may return to the sacristy to remove them. He then takes his place in the lead car of the cortege. Good day, sir. I'm Lieutenant Stewart, the funeral officer. Chaplain Cooper. How you doing, sir? Lieutenant, my signal for the volleys at the conclusion of the service will be Turn my hat and Arriving at the cemetery first, at the head of the cortege, gives the chaplain time enough to make a quick check of arrangements there with the funeral officer. As the casket is removed from the hearse, the pallbearers and chaplains stand at attention and salute. The chaplain then leads the procession through the ranks of the honorary pallbearers to the grave site.
Upon reaching the grave, the chaplain steps to one side to allow the pallbearers to reach the side of the grave. He stands at attention and salutes as the flag-draped casket passes him. At the graveside, the chaplain takes his place at the head of the casket. When the family has been seated with Let the friends pray. and other mourners behind and around them, he begins the interment service. Lord God, through your mercy, those who have lived in faith find eternal peace. Bless this grave and send your angel to watch over it. Forgive the sins of our brother whose body we bury here. By dying, you open the gates of life for those who believe in you. Do not let our brother be parted from you, but by your glorious power, give him light, joy, and peace in heaven, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Give him eternal rest, O Lord. And may your light shine on him forever. At the end of the religious rite, the chaplain gives the prearranged signal to the firing squad. Ready, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, port, port, present, port. He then gives the hand salute hearing the firing of the volley and the playing of taps. The chaplain returns to the position of attention while the flag is being folded. The presentation of the flag concludes the service. This presentation may be made by the chaplain or the survivor assistance officer. If the clergyman officiating at the grave is a civilian, the flag is presented by the survivor assistance officer. This flag is presented in the name of a grateful nation as a token of its appreciation for the honorable and faithful service rendered by your husband. I'm sorry we had to meet under these circumstances, Carol. I would have liked to have known you and Paul in happier times. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you for everything. Chaplain. Thank you, that's good to hear. Chaplain, I want you to know how moved we all were with the service. Thank you. I didn't realize you knew Paul. Well, I didn't really. At least, not as well as I would have liked. 